Hello, this is Nobel Chaudhary from ARM. Today I'm going to show A in prints on ARM. So, welcome to the ARM demo. Uh, welcome to Computex 2024. Welcome to ARM. This is A in prints on ARM CPU. So, let's go on to this demo. So, this is a, uh, pretty much this demo has like a sub parts. So, let's go on to each part one by one. You're going to like this demo uh, pretty much uh, step by step. So, let's jump into the demo. So the first part is the so the first part is the YouTube transcription. So here you have like YouTube tra audio transcription. Uh, you can get a YouTube audio uh, YouTube video URL and just enter in this prompt. So for instance, I have like tab open here where I have like an ARM YouTube video ARM uh, YouTube video link from ARM YouTube channel, and I can, I'm just putting it over here. So this is the video link. So when I just click on like transcribe audio, it just downloads a video in the server and brings you the transcript of this video. So this is like a 56 seconds video and you're getting the transcript of it here. So for your information, this is running on Amazon AWS Cloud. Uh, it is an ARM Graviton3 instance and it is running live now. So we are connected with the IP uh, to the server and everything is processing on cloud on real time. So here we have like the details of the server. It is a C7G AWS instance and you have like an instance size of 16x large. So for the, for the prompt we got here for converting the YouTube video to the text, it's like 4.02 seconds to get this transcript and this is the cost that really matter to you to get this transcript. So this is the first part of the demo. Let us it really downloaded the video and did the transcript itself. It didn't just download the subtitles or something. No, it just actually downloaded the video in the server and uh, identified the speech of it and converted the speech to text. How good is the speech to text uh, model? Uh, actually, we are using like open air whisper model here. It's like more accurate. I can say like up to 100% accurate for English and it also support other languages as well. Is we it maybe even uh, on level with the, what Google is doing with the subtitles? Probably could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah that's what with this. Uh, we we also tried uh, like with other language videos as well. Uh, that worked well. So yeah, uh, let us move on to the next. Do, part. do you need to have access to the API of YouTube to allow to get this, or it just goes and downloads? It just goes and downloads. You you just need the link of the YouTube video. Uh, All right. Yeah. So let 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 us move to the second part of the video. This is like a Llama LLM, Llama large language model. It's Llama two large language model by, by Meta, and we are running it live uh, on CPU, on device. So here we have like seven billion chat model, and uh, let me go quickly here to the prompt and give and ask some questions and interact with the Llama model. Yeah, who's gonna be the next president in the USA? Uh, you can ask. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So with respect to this uh, demo, it cannot answer like a real-time questions or futuristic questions, because the training model of this model uh, is gonna be like up to 2023. So it could answer something up to 2023, but not a futuristic after that. Okay. So, but let us try your question uh, and see what it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he thinks Bernie Sanders is going to win. Okay, cool. So he got some couple of uh, like the candidates who are in the presidential Pre race. Previous one, yeah. Uh, but anyway, like the uh, real candidates who are participating, uh, are doing for this year are available here, like the Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Yeah. So that's okay. Uh, but yeah, whatever you ask, uh, it, it just uh, brings you the response. So let us look into more uh, into the performance metrics of this. So we are collecting some of the performance metrics here. This is running on C7G 6x large machine. So we have like performance metrics like time to generate the first token. This is one of the important performance metric people really care about for LLMs. So the first token is the first word. It could be like I, so which is really important. So whenever you ask a question to the large language model, you wait for the response. So it could be, it should be like less than one or two seconds so that people don't really feel latency for our waiting for a response to read. So this is the total cost to generate this prompt with all the words and tokens. And this is like other metrics uh, that people really care about for LLM. So yeah, this is like an uh, LLM uh, inference on CPU. And by the way, again, I wanna mention, it's all running on CPU. 
without any GPU, TPU, or NPU. Uh, so what is this platform? What is this? OK, this is actually a web application, uh, which is designed uh, to have a, like a front end to interact with the LLM. This is like designed by me uh, in ARM. And uh, this is actually communicating with the back end LLM servers. So you designed this app? Yes. Uh, and uh, people can download this app and install it on their server? Or? Uh, to be frank, uh, it's actually uh, like a ARM proprietary, so folks within the ARM can do it, but not uh, exclusively outside. Not yet. Not yet, yeah. But uh, we have some plans to make this, uh, li like some bring up some blog uh, where people can enjoy using it, uh, but not really like the uh, do implement in their is own this, server. Is this uh, very special? Nobody has done this before? Uh, you didn't uh, see it? Yeah, a couple of people done some front ends to interact with the LLMs, but nobody has done, uh, as far as I know, with these metrics. So they, do, they don't really measure the time to generate first token, something real uh, live on the web UI here. How do you, how do you program this? So I have like, uh, the architecture of this on the other slide, but before that, let us jump on to the next part of the. Yeah. of other two which I've seen before. This is like pretty much more interesting. So this is like audio transcription and LLM response. So here uh, we are gonna record um, with the mic over here uh, and whatever we record the audio, it's gonna convert to the text and then feed to the LLM and gets you the response. It's more like audio to text, text to response from LLM. It's more uh, interesting. So again, we, we also measure the performance metrics once we ask a question to the LLM. So for now, uh, I'm ready with a short question. Uh, if you have anything, uh, you can let me know. I can click on the start recording and you can ask the question. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. How smart can birds be? So you, uh, you ask the birds or the bird? We'll see. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so for, for you, you ask the bird or bird? Like birds, like birds. birds. Okay, okay. I'm actually uh, asking. Uh, I'm actually thought that it could be a bird, like the LLM model from Google. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, before doing that, uh, let's once uh, listen to it, uh, like what it has been recorded. How smart can birds be? Yeah, that's uh, good recording. Uh, we got it clear. Let us go ahead and get the transcript of this audio and also the response from the LLM. So it's gonna download this audio in the background and uh, just bring up the uh, response here. It's a very cool answer. Uh, I'm learning something new for today yeah. about birds. They're amazing, Thank amazing animals. Thanks for that. All right, so uh, there we have. Yeah, we have some metrics here. So it took like 1.2 seconds to convert my audio to text uh, and other metrics. Again, the time to generate the first token, which is pretty much important for people who work on, who deal with the LLMs for any real-time application. It should be less than one second or somewhere up to two seconds, not more than that. So yeah, uh, you got like uh, in 0 0.5 second, and this is what the total cost uh, that really matter. So yeah, uh, this is all, all about this demo. So uh, yeah. if I understand correctly, this, this is kind of like to test the latest models and to figure out what they cost, how, how fast they are. Yeah, uh, this demo focuses on many things. So the one uh, which I need to bring up is like, this uh, demo shows the feasibility of running the LLMs on CPU, more like on ARM CPU. So you could try and use the, use the uh, large GPUs or an giant GPUs uh, for training the model, but once the model is trained for LLM inference, you need the CPU. So for CPUs, uh, there is something speciality. So you get like the gen generic wor workloads all the time, and whenever some AI workloads come onto the uh, process, they do processing of the AI workloads uh, with ARM CPUs. So so that you can utilize the uh, purpose of CPUs and save a lot of cost uh, without going for GPUs. However, if you see the uh, speed of the prompt, that's uh, something realistic. So I hope you have used like uh, ChatGPT before, right? Yeah. So do you think like uh, it's something like ChatGPT or it's slower? Uh, what are your comments on this? It seems really fast what's yeah. going on here. Uh, if it's really fast, ChatGPT is running on GPUs, but it, this is running on ARM CPU, so it's just uh, feasibility, right? So uh, you're using only the Graviton? Yeah, I'm using the Graviton 3, ARM-based, CPU on AWS Cloud. The latest Graviton, the fastest one? To be frank, uh, it's not the latest Graviton as well. It's the, the Graviton 2. It's Graviton 3. The latest one is like Graviton 4, announced oh. by AWS, but it has not yet shipped to the AWS servers. You don't have access to it? I have a preview access, but not a public access. How, so how I just, fast is that? It's 30% more than this. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so does that mean this stuff is faster than what they do on ChatGPT right now? Or they also use ARM server, we don't know. 
Yeah, they use, yeah, uh, like uh, definitely. If they use a GPU, they obviously use a CPU for that. So it's gonna be ARM CPU for sure. So they use both the power of CPU and GPU, but here we are using only the power of CPU to get our stuff done. So we are saving like a lot of cost and getting more stuff out of CPU. Do these uh, Graviton have any kind of like NPU accelerator or something? No, Graviton 3 does not have NPU accelerator or anything connected to it. No need. No need. But you can uh, connect accelerator to improve the performance more. But uh, for this demo, which is running live now, it's nothing. No TPU, no NPU, no GPU, anything. It's only like pure CPU. How good is the Graviton, you think? Uh, Graviton is pretty much like an... Uh, uh, pretty much uh, powerful ARM CPU. It shows like the performance, uh, and it it, is, it has been competing in the compute industry uh, with respect to other CPUs of competing architectures. So probably like uh, Graviton is one of the best CPU I can say. So uh, f for you, it's fun to develop stuff that runs on the Graviton. Yeah, uh, I, I do stuff like uh, I do like benchmarking stuff on Graviton uh, with other workloads as well, like uh, different databases like Cassandra, MySQL, Nginx kind of stuff. So you've been working on it for a long time already? Uh, yeah, I've been working on this stuff uh, when I joined ARM. So it had been like a, a, a couple of months since I've been working on this. Couple of months, you, you get a lot of things done in a couple of months, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's next? What do you want to do next? So uh, there is a lot more to do with this demo as a part of this demo. So we want to bring up uh, many things uh, from, from this. So we want to improve, uh, apply some of, the more, uh, some of the performance optimization techniques as well with respect to ARM, uh, which is the ARM Clyde AI library, which has been announced recently in the Computex uh, by Rene Haas. So we want to, I want to bring up uh, to this uh, web application and it show up the more performance with respect to ARM uh, in terms of AI uh, workloads. Uh, and also one more thing, uh, we have like a couple of other things like uh, this should be more like automated to launch anything. Uh, uh, yeah, you have, you have got some something automated here. You can launch any instance on different machines like the Intel and AMD machines uh, on AWS cloud and get your stuff done. And apart from this, we also want to bring up a uh, blog for educational purposes where people outside ARM can read what's really happening with this and uh, learn more. You think there's a lot of people uh, gravitating to Graviton yeah. because of the cost? Yeah, that's true. Uh, cost, right? Yeah, uh, the trend is actually shown. Uh, like a lot of people uh, are moving to Graviton because of cost. Cost, like it's actually the game of like total cost of ownership. So you get like more number of tokens per second or more number of tokens per dollar, uh, everything with uh, Graviton uh, at a good price. All right, uh, so that's it, so uh, this uh, is a fun fun thing. Uh, I have a presentation for you yeah? here uh, uh, to walk through. So so here, uh, a inference on ARM, this is an ARM universe. Uh, so yeah, uh, here we have like the demo with three parts like YouTube transcription, text llama, and speech, uh, which I've done here. Uh, so actually this is the architecture of the demo. It has like a streamlit front end, uh, which has a fancy front end where you can give the three inputs, either YouTube URL, voice recording, or text. And we have like Llama backend where we have like uh, open a whisper model running on CPU to convert the speech to text. And we have like Meta Llama 2 and 3, uh, which is used as an LLM running on ARM um, for... Which one is better, this or this? Oh, actually both do a different job. This is for converting speech to text. So for the first demo, which I've used, like the YouTube transcription, it converts the speech to text. So, sorry. So it has a better speech to test uh, model right now? Uh, I hope like OpenAI Whisper is a better model for speech to text. This do a different job. This gets the response of LLM. So both of them do a different job and both of them pretty good at their job. Uh, and we have like unlike Response, like tokens per second, cost per, per dollar, and both for the LLM and the whisper response. So what do you think is, uh, how difficult is it for people to embrace these AI models on ARM servers? Uh, it's how not easy or how difficult is it? Uh, it's, it's not difficult, uh, just uh, people need to understand like uh, wherever the use cases that fits good for AI inferencing on ARM, they have to switch uh, to that. So it's based on the application they deal with. So most of the chat applications are the general real-time
generic workloads and at the same time the AI workloads that matter you the most. And, um, you, you said, you mentioned you just did it a couple of months. So it's recent stuff. A lot of things happened the last six months, one yep. year. Yep. Many new things. Yep. This was not happening one year ago. Uh, all this stuff uh, yeah. was different. Uh, it's uh, actually this stuff is being developed like a, a few months before. It's actually like a five months before. So this is pretty much good with the updated things. Uh, yeah.